Hi, my name's Paul and this is PJT Ventures. Join me while I ramble on like an empty dump truck. Today's ramble is going to be about line boring a John Deere 4440's steering axle pivot. What had happened is this is the front, I guess, uh, front of the front end of the tractor. It's upside down right now, but this is where the main axle would pivot. And this bushing wore out, then the bushing, once the bushing was gone, then the pin wore into the casting. So we're going to put a line boring machine through both of these pivot points. We're going to bore this open, make it larger. We're going to press in a new steel bushing. Then we'll press in the factory bushing so that everything is back, gets put back to spec. And then they can reinstall this and put this back together. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. I, 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 think, I think this is a neat little project. Years ago, I had set up this little line board. It's a real simple Simple one. For small jobs, it's perfect. This, they're just some flange bearings, and, and you'll see as we kind of progress how it goes. I'll stop and maybe highlight some of the some of the details. But anyways, we'll get started now. Now, this, these are just some quick alignment tapers that allow you to taper the shaft to the original center line of this bore. And it's just a real fast way to, to make, the, make the bores run true to one another and make the bores run true to the original access that this was machined on. And you'll see here, they just kind of line up and allow you to center this shaft to the original hole. This, this, this hole is pretty, pretty warm, but we still have 180 degrees of, of uh, bore there that's factory that I think is gonna be really close. This end, same thing, just has a, just another flange bearing. Put this guy on. The 4440 tractor, all those, all that era of the 44 series or the 45, or I, I really enjoyed those tractors. The power shifts, the way they start when they struggle to rev up, whether it's warm or cold. I really like that series of tractor. But this one, uh, yeah, we'll get it fixed up. We'll be back in action in no time. So what I kind of had planned here was I'll. There's a machined surface on this side that runs true with this or perpendicular to this bore. So I'll just use some one, two, three blocks and I'll just bolt this plate that holds the flange to the housing. I don't want to do any welding. Normally you'll, you'll weld your bearings to, weld your bearing housing to whatever you're line boring, but I don't like welding to this cast um, if I can't help it. So anyway, so we'll bore this on. These these bearings, they have a, they, they're, they oscillate. So they're, they're in essence self-aligning and you can get, uh, you can get it very close. So we'll, we'll get these guys installed and you'll see what I mean about using these to center everything. But, uh, get this guy on there. We'll probably, we'll probably tap this into place once we get it snugged on there. Only got two hands. Now 
got to make sure we leave clearance for when the cutter comes all the way through, it doesn't hit these blocks. this end. Again, get really close with that taper there. This one doesn't have a machine surface, but I'm kind of letting these three heads of the bolt on the far side press against the casting. And it, again, because, because this bearing oscillates in that housing there, you can kind of have this be on a little bit of an angle in relation to this. But of course the shaft, as long as it's lined up, will run, will run true. Now, Let's raise this up. Let's give up. Uh, that looks good. Start to snug everything up. We'll go back and forth between the two until we get the shaft lined up nice. Okay, I'll come grab the camera and I'll show you what I mean. So here you can see, kind of a shadow there. Here you can see that this taper kind of self-centers itself, centers the shaft into that old bore. And this side is a little bit tighter, but you can see that 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 then provides a a real fast, accurate way to get this shaft lined up in the existing center line. Now we'll let's see here just for a sec. This we'll push this through. This is where the this is where the tool will get hold, held, and this shaft will spin, of course, and will slowly advance it along through the cut. It'll take multiple passes because of course it's a big, it's a big interrupted cut. You can see right in there that we're gonna have a big gap there. So we're probably gonna to have to bore it to being about that oversized. But if you look here, I, I kind of did some quick calculations. This, this thickness or depth right here is gonna be about the same by the time I'm finished machining a new bore in it, so I'm confident that it's going to 
be strong. We'll put a new sleeve in there and then the factory bushing will be good. Okay. Now, these guys we can just walk out of the way. Now their job is done. Now this is just a simple uh, mag drill and I just have it where it's, I just, on the lathe, the shaft is the same diameter as what normally, I think it's like a welding three quarter inch. Um, I'll bring this guy up. Now this this uh, this plate is not only going to act as the bearing support, but it's also going to act as the mag drill support. So we're going to we're going to clamp this piece of channel. Again, this is a pretty a pretty uh, cost effective do it yourself line bore setup. So we'll clamp this piece of channel onto the plate here that's holding the bearing. That will provide a stable place for the, the mag drill. And again, we're going to be taking multiple, multiple cuts and we're going to take nice light cuts as we go so there won't be a lot of strain on everything. I think I'll you know, get this mag turned on. So now you can see this shaft, of course, just slides in these bearing um, races. And I mean, there is, of course, there is, of course, some play in there, but the amount of play that's in that bearing to the shaft versus the amount of vibration we're going to get. I found it to be very, very, very accurate. And it does a really nice job cutting. So, so now we have our action for our, our travel length. We have our one, two, three blocks out of the way for our, our cutter. We've got our mag drill mounted. This is our, this is our cutter. It's just a little simple. Just a little simple uh, carbide, and you can see here it's just, I don't know if that's focusing in right. Anyways, it just gets set screwed into the shaft. This, of course, um, if this was the shaft, this has to be to the center line, this edge to the center line, not centered. This guy... Turn this way. Again, we're going to only just take a, a little cut. And as far as having to be super accurate in this situation, because I'm going to make the bushing after, then I don't really have to hit a specific size and be super precise. I just want to maybe take maybe 10 thou for now. It is going to be a hard go with that big gap there. But okay, well it all looks pretty good. I think we'll give it a we'll give it a test run. We'll see what happens. See if I put it in the right way. Oh, that's the wrong button.
So there's just a few small, we can see them in there, terrible shadow. There are just a few small imperfections left in the bore. So one more pass and I should be able to get the damage all cleared out of there. And that will give us our new round bore. Give there it is. Good, turned out good. So before I take it apart, I'll just kind of give a bit of a description. So this, this is just a flange bearing, just a chunk of plate. I've bolted the plate to the flange bearing. This I think is an inch and three eighths shaft. And these are just standard um, bearings. And you can see here, these clamps just squeeze this plate to this housing and line up the line up the bore with these tapers. Now you don't need the tapers. These these just make it fast, but you could just measure the you could just measure your difference in diameters and line your shaft up accordingly. But when you're trying to hold all these clamps and stuff, these these tapers make it nice. And then the the tool itself is if I can get in there. The tool itself is just held in a square in a square hole. So that tool cutter is just held in with a set screw and that cutter is, is the, the point of contact is lined up with the center of the shaft. You can see that it's, you can see that this is, this is kind of offset so that this face is directly in line with this center line. And then there's just a set screw that you use to tighten and loosen and advance your cutter. And then, like I said, we used one, two, three blocks to clamp to a machine surface that was inside there. And then we just used clamps to clamp to the angle iron or the channel iron and the channel iron allowed the mag drill to hold itself there. And then we could just advance back and forth in order to get our in order to get our tool to travel as we cut anyways it's kind of an inexpensive way to make your own line bore so we'll take this all apart now and we'll start working on the bushing <laughs>